Hello everyone, um, we're group one and today we'll be analyzing the electronic funds transfer industry. Uh, next slide. So what is EFT industry? So the industry is made up of all these services that allow consumers to complete payments over computer network. For example, some of these include wire transfers, ATM, credit cards, and personal computer banking, which are services like PayPal, uh, Venmo, Venmo, Google and Apple Pay, Cash App, and Zelle. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so these became very used nowadays. So why? that's why they're very important. Um, they're very easy. It only takes a download of an app and you just enter like a few personal questions like your name, phone number, and account information. And you're all set up to start making payments. Uh, two, they are very reliable in the sense that unlike sending payments, like through via checks or money orders, uh, you do not have to risk the payments being lost or tampered with while being handled by the mail carrier. Uh, three, it is very accessible because they are services offered through apps nowadays. We have easy access to devices like our smartphones, uh, tablets, and computers. In just minutes, you are able to log on and send a payment, whether it is to a peer or a merchant. Uh, now let's dig back into some of the history of the EFT industry. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> In 1871, Western Union pioneered the wire transfer since they were already an established telegraph company. It was something attainable for them Wire transfers are just electronic transfers from one bank establishment or agency to another. Um, all users had to do was pay a small fee and provide the receipt receipts information. Um, starting in 1915, once again, Western Union was being innovated and offered an early form of credit card, which was called metal money. Um, it was just a card that had a name and information of the person that promised to pay back later. Then all the way through 1959, we see an evolution in the credit card. Some were only intended to be used in restaurants like the dinner club card. Finally, in 1959, American Express created the first plastic card. And in um, 1969, Americans were introduced to the very first ATM. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> A huge leap occurred during 1994 as the first online purchase was made in the US to buy a CD. As there were more advanced in tech, in 1998, PayPal was launched as the first electronic payment service. 10 years later, we have two college students launch Venmo. From there, moving forward, we saw an increase in app launches that were to serve the EFT industry. A very important launch was the Zelle app because that was a bank's counterattack to apps like Venmo, PayPal, and Cash App. Uh, many banks incorporated Zelle to their already existing apps and made, made it easier for users to send money that would be available in a matter of minutes instead of days. Hi everyone, my name is Cassidy. I'm going to be discussing the key players in the industry, as well as the key issues that the EFT industry has. So the reliability and convenience of use has allowed EFT technology to become popular means of financial transactions worldwide. A uh, predominant amount of EFT services are accessible through payment apps. Most of us have likely heard or currently have a payment app uh, on our mobile device. Digital wallets are becoming the way of the future. 
Uh, EFT apps are hyper-focused on the protection of individuals' information. They provide a highly advanced encrypted security to ensure safety of private financial information. Um, the major US contenders in the electronic funds transfer industry are Apple Pay, Zelle, Venmo, and PayPal, as you can see here. Um, rising competitors also include software such as Cash App, Google Pay, and Square Cash. However, there are dozens of EFT options out there. PayPal was one of the first EFTs created in 1998 and launched a year later as a platform for transferring money. Since its creation, PayPal's revenue has continually been on the incline. PayPal has generated $21.4 billion in revenue in 2020 and a 20.9% increase year on year as reported by businessofapps.com. Um, PayPal today is one of the world's most successful online payment platforms available. Venmo followed and started out in 2009 as a way for founders Andrew Cortina and Ingram Magdon Ismail, um, two friends just wanting to exchange cash. Venmo is a unique platform as it's considered a financial social network. The app allows you to add friends and share purchase activity, um, even though PayPal revolutionized the world of EFTs for business. Venmo changed the game and created a system that made online financial transfers achievable among friends. Um, and Venmo does not have any transferring uh, cost associated with the app. Um, the word Venmo has now become synonymous as a verb with the ability to transfer money. Um, you probably heard the phrase, you know, I'll buy this just Venmo me. Uh, according to businessofapps.com, in the past two years, Venmo has seen a significant growth from 10 million to 4 million users. In that time, it's doubled revenue and tripled annual payment volume. Um, next, we have Apple Pay, which was founded in 2014. Today, there are 507 million Apple Pay users worldwide since its creation, and it's available in 20 different market markets. Um, Apple Pay provides an extra ease of use for users that regularly use Apple products. Uh, privacy means peace of mind, and it means security, and it means you're able to be in the driver's seat when it comes to your own data. Um, this was a quote said by Craig Fedgree, um, Apple's senior vice president of software engineering. And he outlined that their goal is to create technology that keeps people's information safe and protected. Um, it's clear that Apple's made security a key factor in promoting the use of Apple Pay. Next, we have Zelle. It um, was created by the seven largest banks in America as a competitor to Venmo. It shares um, some similarities without the social platform uh, um, part. Uh, Zelle has gained a strong foothold in the US, but Venmo still holds commanding lead in the uh, under 35 age bracket. Zelle is a unique EFT option that is not only a standalone app, it's a payment application used within banking apps. Zelle allows for money transfers direct from bank to bank. Um, and the desirability of the um, mobile payment options has become increasingly popular. The growth with industry, within the industry is not without its issues though. Next slide. Uh, all EFT applications, um, all EFT applications have problems with their security um, and the possibility of scams of its users. The key issues in the industry are security global accessibility and margin of use um, of user error. As widespread adoption has occurred, payment app scams are on the rise. For non-users, 42% say security concerns are the reason why they've not embraced payment apps. Venmo alone has been targeted of, um, has been the target of several cyber attacks in the past. Some EFT services store user financial data and if hacked could jeopardize their customers' payment information. 
some digital payment apps also do not reimburse customers if fraudulent activity or scams occur on the user end. If you're gonna use Zelle to pay for goods and services provided by someone you haven't met, you should make sure they're reputable before transferring money to them, as it's one of the major areas where um, loss occurs while using money transfer apps. Um, the rise of security concerns is a major hindrance of the EFT industry, but other issues, um, for example, user accessibility um, are also problems. Venmo can strictly only be used in the US, not globally, um, and it can only be used via smartphones. And while PayPal allows for global reach, it overall has higher businesses um, user complaints. Um, once you have initially initiated a transfer of funds via EFT, you are no longer in control of those funds. That brings us to the margin of user error. For example, if you intend to transfer someone $10, but instead you enter a denomination of $100 and you press send, that's no longer your money to control. Um, similar issues arise when people mess up the intended party and transfer to the wrong person. Um, current issues of the industry are not slowing down the evolution of the industry, though. PayPal Chief Operating Officer Bill Reddy said on the company's earnings calls, um, we have certainly seen a great demand across our user base for more and more products from Venmo, and we are engaging with the banking system in a very broad um, way across PayPal and Venmo. Um, he said, to be clear, there's nothing beyond Venmo de debit cards that we're looking into, that we're not looking into at this time. The owners and operators of EFT companies have made it clear that despite current issues, they will continue to evolve and expand as the market grows. Hello everyone, my name is Rosalia Alvarez and I'm going to list the key success factors of each of the top companies. within the industry. I'm going to start off with Zell. Zell's been very popular um, in the last few years and that is because the increasing importance of speed. Money transferred through Zell is transferred directly to a bank account immediately at no charge. You don't have to wait several days for it to arrive like you would with uh, Venmo or um, or pay a transfer fee for an instant cash out. This feature may have been contributed to why after only a year in the market, Zelle was poised to overtake Venmo as the most used peer-to-peer uh, -peer payment in the, um, in the US. Uh, next is Venmo. Venmo also has dominated the market by making the transfer of funds um, fun and interesting. The platform features a more uh, social feel, allowing its users to share messages, detailing what they have their spend their money on. Venmo's target market is millennials, so it is this social aspect of the app that attracts people to Venmo and has made it so successful. Another key success element is that Venmo is compatible with millions of merchants, which enables Venmo to take in two types of income streams, which are transaction fees and merchant fees. Um, this gives Venmo a great advantage in the industry over its competitors because it earns significantly more revenue from the per transaction fees in comparison with sell or cash up. Um, like Venmo, Apple Pay has also been successful at involving a list of major retailers. Without their cooperation, Apple would most likely fail. Apple's greatest strength, though, is the ability to change behaviors, such as more and more people use Apple devices because it's easy, convenient, or cool, with little to no regards of the prices they pay for Apple products. Another fast-growing company is Cash Up by Square Inc. Um, Cash Up is a fast catching up. It's fast catching up to Zelle and Venmo. The company's main strength is the ability to incorporate additional features that other apps don't have yet, such as the ability to receive direct deposits from to the Cash Up directly from a user's um, employer or offering a physical cash card that can be used to withdraw money at an ATM. 
this feature allows users to use their funds without ever having to touch their bank accounts. Um, this is a plus for many users um, as it helps with budgeting and control of their finances. Cash App has also been successful in staying competitive in the market with um, younger audiences, and it does so by offering the ability to trade cryptocurrency directly from the app. The last one on the list is PayPal. PayPal is one of the largest online payment processors in the world. PayPal, PayPal's key success factor is having a powerful network. The more users that sign up uh, for PayPal, the more necessary it becomes for servers or retailers to accept that service, which creates a lucrative cycle for PayPal. PayPal's other greatest strength is being by far the leader of its field with more than 83% of the market share, which is very hard for competitors to catch up to. Also, um, big partnerships. Some of its partners are uh, Visa, Alibaba, MasterCard, and Citibank, among others. So this concludes the breakdown of the key success factors. Hi, everybody. My name is Andrew Flores, and I'll be talking about the recommendations for the EFT industry. Um, so the EFT industry has seen recent success in the past couple of years. This is mainly due to new technology and, of course, COVID-19. And I say this because people are more willing to not send money to their friends or to their coworkers face to face. Um, so the EFT companies allow them to do this cashless. It's a cashless way to send money to friends, to businesses, or to your peers just in general. So it's seen a lot of recent success. However, like any other industry, uh, there still is room for improvement. So how do we, what is the process of us making recommendations for the next 10 years for companies like PayPal, Venmo, Apple Pay? Uh, one thing we have to look at is uh, almost doing like a SWOT analysis of these companies and, in, and of the industry as a whole. So we look at the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats. We want to capitalize on our strengths and opportunities. We want to limit our weaknesses and we want to avoid our threats. So one of the biggest weaknesses we see in the EFT industry as a whole, um, is just trying to gain a broader pool of users. Part of this is the fact that many users uh, that aren't currently using EFTs are skeptical. They're skeptical of the software, they just, a good way to put it is that they're uninformed of what uh, cashless payments can do. Uh, in order to gain these customers and gain their trust, one of the things we could do is improve and increase our marketing strategies. Uh, we could do this through advertisements, sponsorships, and promotions. So through advertisements, you want to make uh, commercials, ads uh, that are featuring the different um, details of the EFTs, uh, whether it be how safe it is, how quick it is uh, through commercials or whatever, you wanna make it um, so that people come and use your product, use the software. Uh, next thing would be sponsoring. You can see the picture of the Suns jersey there. Uh, it's just, and there's a PayPal logo on it. Uh, sponsoring is huge in my opinion uh, because you get uh, brand recognition. You get your brand recognition out there to millions of people, whether this be through sports or really anything. Um, so brand recognition is key. And then promotions. Uh, in order to entice people to start using EFTs, I think promotions would be something huge for these companies to use in the near future. Uh, part of this could be offering uh, zero uh, transaction fees for the first month when you sign up as a new customer or they could, they could run promotions through certain businesses. So say uh, you pay uh, through, say you pay through Apple Pay at Starbucks or at Target, you earn uh, cash back. So these are something EFT companies can use where they work with, with other companies, whether it be retail, restaurants, you name it, and they kind of just promote their brand. Uh, the next part would be growth into retail payment systems. Uh, this is another thing where they can capitalize and kind of grow 
into new subsections of the financials market. Um, so at the retail checkout, you know, we're used to it taking forever. Uh, people use cash. Uh, very rarely people use checks, but that that's even longer. So um, if retail companies can start using EFTs, uh, where you go, you go up to checkout and you literally just show your phone and it, it would just make it a lot faster if they could do it that way. So it's a, so the EFT companies have the faster and easier alternative to checkout. And I think it would be a one-win for the customer, for the, for the retail companies. And of course, for the EFTs, it would be a high leverage investment for them. Uh, the next thing, another issue within the EFT industry is uh, simply just the security. We wanna improve our security. And that goes for any high-tech industry, um, especially when you're dealing with uh, customer data, customer information. Uh, a lot of people are real sensitive to joining EFTs, uh, any EFT app, mainly because they're afraid of their uh, information being leaked or just hackers in general. So one way companies can start to avoid this sort of fear and skepticism, uh, we want to basically just invest more into advanced protection. Uh, this can be anything from enhancing our software, uh, two-factor authentication, uh, investing more into that, uh, security codes, or even using multiple firewalls just to avoid being hacked. Uh, and then another thing going along with this would be marketing, marketing the fact that uh, these EFTs are safe and they're protected and it would be overall a positive user experience. All right, uh, so I'm David Dombre and I'll conclude this presentation. Uh, so today we talked about the electric, electronic funds industry, which is a new large industry. Uh, we saw that at a global rise after the global rise in e-commerce, uh, it led to the creation of software that enabled people to like, have financial transaction, transactions and digital payments worldwide that were a lot easier. Uh, it's already well developed as 80% of US adults already use it. And it has over $60, $60 billion of revenue worldwide right now. Uh, Venmo, Zelle, and PayPal, and Apple Pay are the main, uh, main player in the industry. We have a few new... Um, competitors such as Cash App rising up. Uh, so the industry has clear advantages uh, was a way it gen generates revenue first uh, with transaction fees, credit card fees, merchant fees. Uh, and it's also very convenient to use as you don't need to be face-to-face. -face. You could just use your phone. You could, even if you forget your wallet, it's very convenient to use. There's a few key factors that make certain companies more successful than others. Uh, first is uh, compatibility, uh, being compatible with third-party outlists and uh, allows companies in the EFT business to have an extra source of income as third parties will usually have to pay a fee to uh, whichever uh, company you use, whether it's Venmo or Zelle, they usually pay them a fee to be uh, um, available on the app. Um, and I also make it make it so that people get more used to using them as the more stories you see them in, the more places they're used, the more people are going to get used to using them. Uh, another thing that makes them very convenient is, is speed. Uh, the best ones are the ones that allow people to access their money instantly without a delay, and that is often the determining factor into which company they'll decide to use. Uh, finally, also uh, having a few extra features and keeping up with trends will give an additional edge over the competition and it'll help them differentiate themselves uh, in the mind of users. Uh, we actually completed a survey on which so software people used and our survey showed that Venmo and Zelle uh, were tied for the first, for the most used with both having 88.2% of our respondents saying they've used them and the other uh, software were much lower. Both Venmo and Zelle have unique added features. Uh, Venmo and its social media feature makes it more fun, and Zelle being closely related to banks and working with already, already being included in banks apps 
and they also both offer instant transfer even though you have to pay a small fee of Venmo. So all this proves that these are the main qualities user, that users are looking for in the service right now. But in the future, whether it's the big companies that are already established or um, the new ones that are trying to rise up, there's a bright future available for companies that take advantage of the opportunities that are available while making sure to deal with the issues already there. So the first problem is reaching a broader pool of users. Many users just don't see the user EFT yet, EFTs yet, or they just worry about personal data security. So organizations the organization are gonna be able to use marketing tactics to best display their usefulness and you know, uh, show uh, uh, security regarding data, data security will definitely set, them, set themselves apart. Uh, what's also important is uh, allowing businesses in the industry to continue, the, what's gonna allow businesses in the industry to continue to grow is being present in, in retail payment systems. So more retail and consistent, retail and customers present a, a significant and consistent market that EFT, if EFT can penetrate them. And so, the more convenient, simple, and fast they make themselves, the more uh, use they'll become in the future. So overall, elect electronic funds transfer is a, is a relatively new industry with an already impressive revenue. And it has a potential to grow even further in the future. Uh, it's a challenging market to enter. So the current leading companies and the future growing one will be the one to dictate, dictate in the company's future. Uh, next. Thank you for your time and that was all for us.